Welcome everyone, Nick here. Welcome to the show. If you're new, thanks for coming back if you're not. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about the Chinese EV market, the future of the market, what it means for, historically speaking, dominating companies in the space, most notably Tesla, and what it means for the newcomers like Neo, Xpeng, and Li Auto. Is Tesla's steep drop in Chinese deliveries significant of a coming reality, or is this just a misstep? Before we get to it today, Webull is giving out two free stocks worth up to $1,850 for free. You could trade before and after hours markets. We all know the early bird gets the worm. You do not want to miss this opportunity. Who doesn't like free stocks, especially two of them? Anyways, ladies and gents, let's dive right into it. The Chinese market is currently one of the hottest EV battlegrounds on the globe. Although Europe, for the first time in history, overtook China as the world's largest EV market, China remains a crucial battleground that companies need to harness and dominate in order to survive and thrive. Much of this massive market was due to China's early adoption to the new technology and the rapid implementation of subsidy programs issued by the government. Now, although many of these subsidies in China are beginning to decrease in the coming years, analysts maintain that China will be a top EV market for decades to come. Now, historically, Tesla has dominated the electric vehicle market within the country. Tesla's Model 3 was the highest selling EV in China last year. However, we are seeing other brand names making aggressive and relentless pushes into the market, saturating the space. Now, with all of this competition, there are surely to be winners and losers, and although we are still seeing increased sales, hence a bigger market, the room in this market is becoming smaller. Now, China has been a secret weapon for Tesla in an area they see huge importance in. However, this may be all coming to an end as domestic brands eagerly carve out slices that Tesla once previously monopolized. In 2020, Tesla's Chinese deliveries more than doubled, rising to $6.66 billion in sales. This amounted to around 20% of total sales. In comparison, throughout 2019, just one year previous, the company brought in only around 12% of sales from China. This is showing a growing market and increased importance to their bottom line. Now, a lot of the success was due to the domination of their Model 3 through a focused approach and targeting of the country. Tesla ramped up production at its Shanghai Gigafactory to oversee the steep rise. However, the story has not been the same in just the past few months. From March, where the company sold 35,478 made in China or MIC vehicles, the company went on to drop 20%, posting just 25,845 MICs. Of these, it's said that 14,000 were exported out of the country. Now moving into May, where a report that was just released indicated that the company only delivered around 9,800 vehicles in the month. This coming from a single source dropping below the 10,000 mark. This sent shockwaves through Tesla's share price. Now there are a lot, and I do mean a lot of factors at play here, and everything should be taken into context. Share valuations also fell due to news that the company had to recall 5,530 Model 3s and Model Ys to solve seatbelt issues. We need to remember that H1 in China is typically lower in deliveries. The auto market is very cyclical. We have also seen the global chip supply shortage devastate deliveries, but nonetheless, we do need to pay attention to this. China is Tesla's second largest market after the United States and signifies so much more than this. Investors for months now have been pricing in the promise that Tesla will be able to take over the international market in a similar fashion to what was seen domestically in the United States. Slowing growth in the international EV arena deflates some of this anticipation and could increase investor interest into other up-and-coming EV competitors. Now, over the same period, we did see other domestic Chinese companies like NIO face three consecutive months of lowering deliveries. However, nowhere near the same drops in percentages that Tesla experienced. Now, the driving factors in this decrease in sales that Tesla is experiencing could be from a number of reasons. Firstly, you have the restrictions on personal eligibility to actually buy a Tesla. You may remember the Chinese government recently restricted Teslas from government and military personnel, in part due to privacy concerns. There was also a string of Tesla crashes, which could pose safety concerns for the Chinese consumer. 
let's not forget about the chip supply. However, more than anything, I do think this could signify the growing saturation of the space and the potential takeover from domestic brands like Neo. Now, we do know one thing for sure, and that is that Tesla is currently undergoing a PR crisis within the country. JL Warren Capital CEO Jung Hung Lee states that she sees a definitive material impact on Tesla branding, orders, and deliveries for future months, and states that whether orders in China decreased in May by 30% or 50%, depending on which source you're looking at, she states that, quote, both are disastrous. Tesla's ability to increase its market capitalization is completely hinged on international markets such as China, and this dwindling of sales represents more than just speed bumps in my opinion. Now, I do love Tesla. You may know I am invested in them. I have been for years. They are genuinely one of my favorite companies, and I do see them as the market leader currently. However, this doesn't mean that I do not have concerns and that there isn't going to be stiffer competition in the coming quarters. We have seen Chinese domestic brands, who used to not even be a thought for Tesla, really give them a run for their money. Neo's numbers are crawling up to the 10,000 unit milestone per month, which, if not hindered by the chip shortage, would have likely already occurred as per Neo's original guidance and factory capacity. However, if Tesla's numbers remain low, it is feasible that Neo, once their ET7 hits the roads in Q1 2022, could potentially overtake Tesla's Chinese numbers. We also see other Chinese competitors actually increasing its deliveries in May, a company I've talked about frequently on this show, and what I think could be a dark horse in the entire EV battle, Xpeng. They saw a 10% increase from April, landing at 5,686. Tesla is expecting its Chinese market to continue growing, stating that its proportion to sales should increase to a whopping 40% of total sales by next year. The company had already been thinking of revisiting these initial projections last month, and I do think a complete re-evaluation is needed after the May deliveries report. I do think we are seeing the next generation of electric vehicle makers stealing market share away from Tesla, a market they had previously held almost to themselves. Neo, Li Auto, and Xpeng have been making all of the right moves and are extremely well positioned to continue moving into the Tesla market share. Furthermore, NEO has maintained guidance on Q2, which would signify that they are projecting hitting a record delivery month of June, somewhere around 8,000, this despite the global chip supply shortage. This is a company that is rapidly increasing its sales, increasing its production ability, and potentially having a capacity of 1.3 million vehicles per annum by the end of the year next year. This is a storyline we're going to have to pay close attention to, especially moving through June. There are rumors stating that Tesla's numbers have bounced back quite significantly. However, we will have to keep a very watchful eye on this. I do think it's Neo's day to win. We have seen their superiority to many other players within the market, and I do expect they will continue to dominate. 2022 is going to be Neo's year. Don't forget about the Weeble promo, two free stocks worth up to 1850 You could trade before and after hours markets using Weeble. We all know the early bird gets the worm. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. Who doesn't like free stocks? Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, folks. Cheers.